Hello everyone. Today I'm out here at the Glore River with my G9 Mark II and my 100-400. Uh, both are weather sealed, so we should be okay. And I thought I'd go over what features on the G9 Mark II make bird photography a bit easier for someone like me who's uh, not really that experienced at it. Let's jump in. It is a day that can only be described as soggy. So I have a bird there in the tree. That's great, I didn't think I'd be seeing a bird at all today. Um, the sun's just coming up now as well, so it's getting a bit too hot in the jacket. But um, I may keep it on just because it's Ireland, the weather's unpredictable. So I should explain how I have the G9 Mark II set up. At the moment I've got it set to animal tracking in the full area, because birds are quick and I don't trust me to move the camera around the place to keep them in frame. I've actually just found this mushroom here on the floor and I'm going to try and get a photograph of that. So, let's set this up on the tripod. I actually thought we were well past mushroom season, but apparently we're not. There's actually quite a few when you look on the ground. Uh, then again, you wouldn't think this is like halfway through April with the weather. <laughs> I just saw a bird there and tried to get some pictures of it. One thing I've always found with long lenses is it's very difficult to frame your shot because you're so zoomed in, particularly this, like your 800 mil full frame equivalent most of the time. I mean, if you're buying the 100 to 400, you're going to want to shoot at 400. I find that like I can, I make a rough guess as to where my like target subject, subject is the correct word, is going to be and I just miss it. Um, so I actually find myself starting out at, oh, okay, I see a little fella there on a branch and he's on to the other side but I'm gonna try and something so you stay there like a good tripod. Now he's gone flew off. <laughs> this is difficult. Maybe it's because I'm like trying to film myself do it. The weather just kinda took a drastic turn there so I switched everything off and it's back in the bag. Everything I brought today is weather sealed. I don't think the microphone I was using was but that's in a bag in the bag so it should be fine. I thought I'd get more photos to be honest, more birds. I suppose that's just it isn't it? Sometimes you go out to take photos and there just isn't any but you still went outside. I know it doesn't look it probably on the GoPro unless the GoPro is covered in water. Are you covered in water? A bit. Like. It's not even nice rain. If it was like good big drops like falling really heavy that'd be great. It's just like mist in the winds, and it just drenches everything, like I'm so... So I'm back inside. Uh, it started raining pretty heavy, and there wasn't a chance of me getting any more bird photos, I'll tell you that. So first of all, let's talk about the 100-400. This thing has such an insane reach that it's like kind of weird to see it in such a small lens. I know in last week's video I called this lens a behemoth. And it is when you compare it to something like this little 14 mil. But I showed it to a friend of mine who shoots uh, wildlife photography a lot more kind of properly than I do. And he uses, I believe it's the 150 to 600 by Sigma. He shoots full frame Canon. This looks like a toy in comparison to his big lens. Cause I mean, I think it's about this long when it's not extended and it's also probably about twice as thick. Like it's a big beast of a thing to be carrying around. As well as the reach, there's also a few things that make this lens great for wildlife photography in my opinion. The first is the stabilization and Normally in a lens like my 12 to 60, that's probably my most used lens, I'll use the stabilization for kind of like a long exposure effect while handheld, or I might just use it for if I'm shooting in low light. What I use the stabilization for more on this lens is to kind of minimize the shake that you get. So like if I'm fully zoomed out, any movement I do at like this end, whether that's like kind of me just shaking, maybe it's cold, maybe I've had too much coffee that morning, um, it's going to be amplified so much at the actual subject. That video I got of the chaffinch was actually filmed with the 100 to 400. I just kind of pressed the camera up to my face, filmed it, and it did a great job with the stabilization in this body and in the G9 Mark II. This isn't the Lumix G9 Mark II. G9 Mark II is filming this. Uh, what this body is, is the Lumix G1. It's the first kind of micro four thirds camera. It's the first mirrorless camera by what we kind of understand them as today. And it's the first interchangeable lens camera with an EVF. Uh, and that's going to be an upcoming video at some point. Uh, it's really fun and just kind of, yeah, I'll, I'll, that's another video. Uh, so another thing on this lens is the focus locking system. You might be shooting a bird and you might like have something kind of in front of you. Now this isn't really a problem on the G9 Mark II, but when I've tested this lens on other bodies that don't have the sort of advanced autofocus that the G9 II has, 
it might focus on the grass or it might focus on something closer than the bird. We'll say. We have a switch here on the body of the lens and what that does is it lets us limit our focusing to be five meters ahead of the lens to infinity. And last thing with this lens is it is weather sealed. Now I got this for 600 euro on MPB in I think it was either well used or heavily used conditioned and there's some scuffs and scratches and I think it's been dropped once or twice so I don't know if I exactly trust the weather sealing but it is nice to have if you're caught out in the rain much like I, I was this morning. Uh, the zoom ring is incredibly stiff. I thought it was a bit of a joke. Everyone got their brand new lenses however many years ago and they were just stiff from the factory. Like, But no, like if I'm holding the body, once I pass like 150 mil, it's quite stiff. So what I do to like counteract this is you just saw it there, I just push pull. And let's talk about the G92. Um, animal detect autofocus is it does a better job of finding birds in the trees than I do. A feature that I haven't used all that much is the pre-burst mode. So what that means is you'll half rest your shutter, a bird will fly past or you'll get the picture of the bird when you press the shutter, but then the camera's been continuously taking images while you have the shutter half pressed. Yeah, you can set that to be anywhere from, I believe it's half a second to two seconds, and you can have it do it at either 20 or 60 frames per second, I think. I would like to say, sorry, it's a bit of a smaller video this week. Um, we had a storm here over the weekend, so I didn't get out to shoot much because it was either like torrential rain or it was so windy that, you know, there was nothing out there to shoot. I also had my driving test on Tuesday, which meant I spent pretty much every bit of my free time just driving around trying to get used to the test. I passed the test, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. That means once I get my actual license through the post, I can then, uh, I can go on the motorway, I can, you know, I can get the ferry over to England, France, or Spain. Next week's video is going to be a look at the GX85, or the GX80, it depends where you're from. It's even called the GX7 Mark II, I think, in some countries. So that's it for this week's video. Big thanks if you made it this far into the video. I know it's been a bit disjointed and kind of all over the place. If you like photography and the Micro Four Thirds system, maybe consider subscribing. I make new videos once a week, and yeah, if you like this video, you know, give it a like. I'm going to go and finish drying off and warming up. Cheers.